Oh, hey. Stay brony, my friends. How you doing gang? Cutting it that close. Because as I get everything going and all of a sudden Podcaster just crashes. The minute, the minute I start the intros, Podcaster crashes. Immediately. How does this happen? I have no idea. But there it is. <sighs> wow. <laughs> Cut it by skin of teeth and come back up. But there you go. How you doing? It's your pal Dusty out here on a fabulous West Coast. San Jose, a very wet San Jose, California. Inches and inches and inches of rain that we should have had over the summer. So the Colopsdale Weather Factory obviously found all of the rain requisitions I sent to them every day for weeks that had fallen behind the desk of Rainbow Dash that she just found when she was cleaning up for Wonderbolt's inspection and said, oh, they want all this rain. Let's give it all to them now. All of it. All of it. Flooding. Dogs and cats living together. Oh, my God. You wouldn't believe the kind of rain we've had. But, you know, you haven't been here. No, you haven't come to talk about the rain in San Jose, have you? No. No. You haven't come here to talk about the rain. You've come here because you want to learn about making jewelry by the master himself, one silver slinger. Are you here, my man? I'm here. Woohoo! The slinger is here. How you doing, my man? Ah, uh, I'm doing all right. Doing I'm all right? just fine. Awesome. Hopefully my over-the-shoulder bugs will work this week, and it doesn't look like they are for some reason. Oh, man. Just, I don't know what the heck's going on with live stream. I just don't know what's going on with live stream, people. I mean, between derping with the distance and not putting my, my shoulder bugs up over my shoulder after I spent all this time really getting all the stuff together that, that this wonderful gentleman does. I mean, the things that this gentleman does. I mean, look at that. Look at that weightlifting belt over there. You know, the Hoof Wrestling Championship. He had a, he had a hand in that, making those. And this wonderful Elements of Harmony Tree, which is right here, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Ah, uh, Cypher Sorize. Tons and tons. Yeah, Cypher Sorize. You haven't seen that in a while, have you? Huh. Yeah. Not since ever free. Not since ever free. Yeah, but yeah. So he's here to talk about all that stuff. Let's get our questions up. Uh, what's going on? Duh. Go away. Okay, you go away. Uh, where's my questions? Script. Script! <laughs> 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 of course, by now you know what the first question is. What are some of the cartoons and comics you have watched or read as a child or are still watching to this day? Uh, well, as a child, I was obsessed I can safely say obsessed with Sonic the Hedgehog. <sighs> I watched anything cartoon related with Sonic. I played all the games. I collected the comics. I had stacks and stacks of the comics. Um, and I think that lasted until I was about uh, about 16. And I'm still a bit of a fan of the show, just not a diehard fan like I used to be. Mm -hmm. And I can safely say that, yeah, most of what I did with my young life was probably related to Sonic the Hedgehog. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Sonic the Hedgehog. Yes. Nothing else though, just Sonic. Well, I I was I was 
definitely into your shows that you get on Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network. I was huge into all those awesome shows on Cartoon Network. Ed, Ed and Eddie, Powerpuff mm -hmm. Girls, mm -hmm. Johnny Bravo, all of those. I watched them all. I loved them all. And Nickelodeon, you know, they had some of the good ones, too, that I loved growing up on. Hey Arnold, mm -hmm. um, Angry Beavers, uh, Cat Dog, all those. I loved them all. I, I, I was always a cartoon fanatic, and I still am. Cool. Um, what was what was that thing that made you think in the back of your mind, hey, you know, I could make I make awesome jewelry. Maybe I could make awesome jewelry that pony fans might want. You know, it was that was actually um, a very interesting how that happened. I um, after I started watching the show, I think I was watching the show for about six months at the time and mm -hmm. started admiring the fandom and seeing just how amazing it was and all the awesome things everyone was doing, animations, comics, music, all this artist and crowd, all that stuff. I was just like, what can I contribute to this fandom? And the answer was always right in front of me, but I was just too blind to see it. I remember it took me forever because I was like, what do I, what do I possibly possess? What talent do I have that I can contribute to this fandom? I've got nothing. <laughs> as, you're, as you're setting diamonds in a ring at work, you're going, yeah. I have nothing to contribute to this whole society. Yeah, hammering, yes. hammering domes out of silver. What, what yes. can I do? I, I don't have any marketable skill that, you no. know, and then it just hit me. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. This kind of looks like Celestia's cutie mark. <gasps> yeah, Ding! Exactly. Yes. I, like, I know what I can do. <laughs> so uh, the, the, the thing that brought you to my attention was, of course, the Rings of Harmony, which uh, were made for the con that shall not be named. Um, and then moved toward dog tags and pendants, and, and now you make some of the most breathtaking pieces of artwork that this fandom sees. Um, all artists get this one. Where 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 do the ideas flow from? You know, um, a lot of the ideas I get from the show itself. I watch the episodes, and some you know, well, sometimes you see jewelry right in the show, and I'm like, okay, let's reverse reverse engineer that. Mm -hmm. Other ideas come from me, from you know, fans, people who talk to me, give me some crazy ideas. Some of them are just. There's a lot of ideas in my head that I I'm, I tell them I say I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to figure it out because mm -hmm. that is awesome. And you know some ideas I just I brainstorm they 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 just kind of come to me. I get those eureka moments you know that a lot of artists get. Uh, they really just come from me all over the place. It, it's um, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cool. Um, you've been one of the most consistent vendors at all of the conventions, especially this year. You've been to almost all of them. Um, how has your process changed of going to a con from the first con you went to, which I think is the con that shall not be named, to say, you know, Nightmare Nights, which I saw you only a couple months ago? Right. Well, uh, it's definitely changed a lot. Uh, the first one I went to was actually Canterlot Gardens, and I went there as a, you know, I, as a fan mm -hmm. of the show. I'd never vended. And then, yeah, the first con I vended at was the um, Vegas convention. And it has changed tremendously since then i've become a lot more organized i've i've kind of i've kind of become smarter to the trade i guess you can say i've learned okay you got to kind of keep track of what sells what doesn't sell because you got to know what quantities of what to bring um and I, i've learned i've learned ways to actually i've learned of many ways to actually become more productive so i can keep up with the uh, supply and demand that gets asked of me at these conventions mm -hmm. I used to do at the beginning. I did everything by hand. The engraving was by hand. The hand everything was by hand. And since then, I have um, purchased some machinery to kind of help me along with some of the stuff, like the engraving. And uh, I actually have um, somebody very important to thank for giving me the idea to um, expand my engraving from hand done to um, machine done. And that would be uh, Lee Tokar. Lee. Lee. Yeah. Tokar. Um, back when Lee um, Lee does his fan built thing, and he's actually discussed possibly doing merchandising with me at some point. Mm -hmm. And um, he asked me, he goes, "Can you mass produce merchandise?" And that was back in Vegas. And he goes, "Can you mass produce merchandise?" I went, "Oh, absolutely!" But in my mind, I was thinking, "No way!" No. <laughs> so when I got home, I talked to my father, who's also a jeweler, um, and I said, "How can we expand to do mass production?" And we did some research and looked into it, and we found some awesome, amazing. Uh, very expensive <clears throat> machinery <laughs> to help us to help us along with that, and um, that step alone, thanks to Lee, has actually um, 
helped me get significantly faster and uh, and you know and it's even broadened my horizons beyond my even my own expectations you know thanks to that one you know moment i had with him it was fantastic i own a lot really well, that's awesome um thank you lee hopefully we'll see lee back here on the show yes. wait wait nudge, nudge. sometime <laughs> soon um working in precious metal mm -hmm. as you do um is there one metal that you really do not like to work with and why uh, let me see. Well, uh, there's really no precious metal I don't like working with. I love working with them all. Um, it's in fact, if, uh, I was actually taught when I was younger that if I can work with silver, he, um, I can work with gold because it's, it's a lot easier. And I found out that is true. But I do accent my precious metal sometimes with other metals, um, you know, br uh, jeweler's brass, copper. And for a while there, I was doing steel. Mm -hmm. um, and I would have to say that's the metal I don't like working with. And I've actually stopped working with it all entirely with my projects because mm -hmm. just um just some issues that i've been having with it in general my it just it doesn't you know you get a metal as hard as steel next to a metal as soft as silver and they don't get along very well mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's it's just become one of those things that i've realized you know working with this has become more problematic than i originally anticipated i mean it's it doesn't work well with the other metals it's it's so hard it's doling my files it's you know damaging my equipment working with it so i just dropped it entirely hmm. it's, it's, it's kind of strange I, um working with steel as i have right on motorcycles right. um you can actually soften it by oh. by running uh, a acetylene torch across it right which will actually it's really weird because it basically takes all the molecules and puts them in a straight line instead yeah. of doing all of this stuff which makes it hard if you hit it with an acetylene gas torch and blacken the steel, it actually straightens out all the stuff so you can actually meld it a little bit easier. Um, right, right. Which is weird. And well, and that's the other thing. Um, I, I, I do work with an acetylene torch too, and mm -hmm. um, it does soften it. But the discoloring that it does, I actually, yeah. my equipment's actually not designed to get this coloring out of metal that tough. Uh -huh. And um, there's, certain, I, um, there's certain acids we use mm -hmm. that get rid of the discoloring but you actually cannot put steel in our particular acids it actually um contaminates it and ruins it right so i can't even use my acids to help get rid of that so oh. it, it it like again it goes back to how how tricky it is it's yeah. kind of you know you learn something new every day yeah there you go. um some of your stuff has been commission pieces like uh the uh, wedding set that uh the uh Prince Shining Armor, Princess Cadence wedding uh, bands that you did. Mm -hmm. um, and tell us about the process of, of, of getting custom-made jewelry done by you. Uh, what's the process? Somebody comes to you with an idea. How do you go back and forth to get what, what your customer really wants? Um, well, the thing about the um, um, custom work, the commission work, I actually used to do a lot of handmade pieces by commission, but I've actually recently stopped doing that. Um, but... Back when I was doing those, it, you know, it's kind of a back and forth. They tell me, "Hey, we want a wedding set, but we want Princess Cadence and Shining Armor's cutie marks embed in, embedded into the ring. What can you do?" Well, you know, well, first I just kind of determine, okay, um, what what process do I go about to do to making this? Do I do it? Do, do I hand make it? Do I cast it? Do I um, job it out to someone else because I can't handle it? That never usually happens. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I determined, okay, what process to take, and then I determined how complex will this process be, and then it just kind of goes back and forth, and then we shoot them prices. Uh, but it's gotten to be one of those things, though, that I've kind of dropped doing it because custom work like that is significantly more expensive to do than, you know, just me doing my own designs mm -hmm. and um, presenting them in my shop. And it's getting to the point where some of these designs have become so expensive, people have been... I guess I could say getting a little um, nasty with me because they think I'm trying to take advantage of them because of the prices I mm -hmm. give them. When mm -hmm. in actual reality, actuality, I'm just that's what I have to charge them to make it worthwhile. You know, I'm yeah. like we're talking something that's going to take two weeks of my time to do. I got to charge you this, and mm -hmm. they have a hard time comprehending it. Oh yeah, it, 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 I I found that in my in my uh, line of work that people don't understand that it's taken me, you know, 25 years. Of working on motorcycles to get the knowledge that's in my head. If right. you want the knowledge that's in my head, just because I know it doesn't mean I'm going to give it to you for free. Right. You know, it's, exactly. it's taken me all this time and effort and money to basically 
learn this stuff. If you don't know it and you want to come to me to, to either get it done or learn something, then you have to pay me for it. Right, you know? yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, this, this is one of those things I wish people, I wish modern society would get. I mean, we've been such a, you know, mechanized society mm -hmm. of, of, we have robots do everything, therefore it must be cheap. You know, yes. when you start going and getting handmade things, you have to understand that it's handmade. Somebody right, put right. their their soul into that, so therefore you pay for that. And the more that humans figure that out, the better we'll be. Um, let's see. Uh, you love doing the charity charity pieces, um, and they are really some of your masterworks. I swear to goodness, because I've seen right. most of them up close, because I've auctioned most of them. Um, <laughs> in fact, in the last yeah, in the last year, your charity pieces brought over eleven thousand dollars. Right. Two different charities. <laughs> um, it is sometimes is, is it sometimes hard, really, to come up with uh, a new idea for a charity piece, seeing if you've done so many of them so far. Um, I can say for I can say yes. Um, every year it gets a little bit harder because every time I do a ch piece for charity, it's not just the idea of coming up with it. I always try to just outdo the last piece. I, I try that every time. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, this piece is great. The, this Princess Luna's Luna pendant is fantastic. Mm -hmm. How can I do something better than that? How am I gonna How am I gonna top this? How am I gonna do better? And right. um, it's one of those things where it's yeah. Every time it just gets a little bit harder because and I'm thinking about next year and thinking about everything I want to do and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, <laughs> can I pull this off? But um, I got some ideas though. You can do it. I know you. Oh yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, when traveling to all these cons, uh, do you have any stories? Juicy stories about getting around with all this precious metal and gemstones that you have to drag with you at all these places. <laughs> oh man! Every time I go to a convention, um, I live in the middle of nowhere, so I always I have to fly to pretty much all of them, and I always put all of my jewelry in my carry-on. I always have it with me the whole time, and sure enough, every time I go through airport security, they have me open that bag up and tear it apart because there's just too much for their x-ray to take out at one so yeah i'm always having to put all this jewelry out and you know in front of everyone and you know and everyone's just eyeing and gawking out i'm like yeah shiny things isn't that neat a lot of them don't touch please <laughs> just look so yeah every every time i go through there i got it and that thing that little tiny carry-on's heavy too and i'll i remember one time i was getting on the plane and I was trying to get that thing in the overhead bin, and I about lost my balance and almost lost it. And one of the flight attendants actually helped me catch it, and she was like, "My goodness, what in the world is what in the world is in here?" And I said, "Jewelry and lots of it." And she was like, "Really?" And I said, "I said, yeah, I said very specifically themed jewelry." I said, "Unless you happen to be a fan of a particular show, you might not be interested in any of it." But yeah, that's what's in there. That's crazy. Um, what is your favorite thing? about MLP FIM and who is your favorite character? Uh, my favorite thing about um, MLP is um, I would have to say, and this isn't, you know, everyone has their own opinion, but when I first started watching My Little Pony, you know, I watched the first few episodes and I told myself, I said, this is the perfect cartoon. It is. I, I, I know everyone's opinion is different, but I was watching it and I said, you know, it's bright, it's cheerful. I mean, everything from the colors that they use to the voice acting, everything is just so, it just coincides so perfectly. The story writing, I mean, the humor, I said the humor is fresh and original and they don't have to, they don't have to put these inappropriate into windows in there that they like mm -hmm. some people like to sneak into other cartoons you know for the yeah. adults i said what to keep it you know and i said it's just amazing everything is just so and i've always just loved the cartoon and admired it just for how like i said perfect i think it is it just everything and the character i would have to say in the cartoon i love the best would be rarity i love rarity she's so she's so generous she's so um f she has the best facial expressions of any pony in the show i mean every you know and she's she has to, she she gets so stressed and so worried and then she could flip flop from that to okay everything's cool yeah. you know and which is something i personally can relate to mm -hmm. a lot cuz i'm just like her i'll be working on my bench and i'll be like where's that piece where's that piece i just spent 30 minutes on i i spent 30 minutes on oh here it is <laughs> you know i'm just like that i i kid you not and so i i would i would definitely say i love rarity just because i I can relate to her and just how funny she is. 
Okay, what about this? What about Rarity's taste in jewelry? Uh, Rarity has you know, pretty good taste in jewelry. A lot of the stuff she wears is kind of basic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I saw some stuff she was wearing on that, um, oh gosh, the episode with uh, Trinderhoof. Yeah. I, cannot I was seeing some of the stuff she was wearing there, and I was like, yeah, I could make that. I was like, but nah, too easy. <laughs> what, what about the antique brooch? From ah the antique brooch, yeah. I've I've actually had requests for that one, and Ooh. I've been trying to think. I've still been kind of planning how to do it, and it was one of those things I meant to do much much sooner, and I still plan to do it. Mm -hmm. It but it just keeps kind of getting pushed aside for other projects. Yeah, but yeah. um, I do like the antique brooch, and eventually um, everyone will see that in my gallery. Ooh, got something to look forward to now. Um, you work actually in the family business because your dad owns the jewelry store. Right and gold slinger. That's yeah, my yeah. dad gold slinger. That's correct. Yeah. What What is the best non MLP piece you've ever done? The best non MLP piece I've ever done. Um, I would cons I would call it the. Um, well, it was okay. We had this lady come in and she showed us this brooch that um, the Queen of England was wearing and said, "I want something similar to this." Ooh. And my father and I were just just kind of looked at it, and we were like, "Well, let's Whoa. let's figure this out." And this brooch had over 100 tiny little diamonds in it um, that I had to set by hand, and um, it was made of white gold. It had a retail value of about 50 grand, mm. and um, I would consider it probably my best. I definitely. Um, considered it one of my masterpieces and i'm actually trying to find a picture of it real quick because i do have a picture of it online on another okay account you send that to me so i can put it in the youtube upload because i can't put it up now but you oh, send okay. that to me so i can put it in the youtube upload which i will yeah. which means it's right here okay. three two one okay <laughs> it wasn't there now but it will be at the yeah. all right and uh, yeah. uh, that's cool uh, what are your most popular designs was there any design that you thought would be popular that just didn't go over um, well, one of my most popular designs was one of my first one. I called it Nightmare Moon is Watching. It's the, um, it's actually the symbol you see on Nightmare Nights, mm -hmm. the Nightmare Moon symbol. That was actually one of my very first pieces. Uh, the third piece I actually made, in fact, um, about two and a half years ago when I started all this. And it's still a hot seller to this day. I've still got people um, buying it to this day and wow. I've probably made that piece over and over again about 50 times wow um, the keys of harmony um, everyone loves them mm -hmm. I, 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 I still sell quite a few of those yeah. every now and then very popular design cutie mark pins people love them also and um, there were a few though that were flops the um, the symbol uh, the, the uh, mirror in the uh, not mirror in the moon I'm sorry Mer uh, Mer yeah, mysterious Mary Duell. The symbol she wore on her mm -hmm. outfit, I made that into a sterling silver pendant, and I was like, "This will do well. This will do just fine." And never sold it. Um, another another design was the um, the Ponyville and Wonderbolt batons. When mm -hmm. they were passing those batons, I thought uh, I had a lot of people saying, "You got to make it. You've got to make this. You got to make this." And that was before I saw the episode that day. And I went home and I, I was watching the episode and I was like, "Okay, these batons have to be the thing everyone was talking about. These yeah. have to be it." So I made them. Um, never really sold them. And I was like, "Oh, what was everyone going on about?" And they said, "No, no, Spitfire's pin. That's what we want you to make." Oh, I was like, oh, oh, okay. I'll, I'll make that then. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. And um, a few things. Um, I kind of considered flops. They never sold or anything, but well, that's just it. You always you're you're always putting something out there to find out if it if it if it works. You know, right? right. You got you always got to try. So you can't just right. sit there and go, okay, well, I'm just gonna make dog tags for the rest of my life. No. Yeah, no. You gotta take gotta take that that. Um. Okay, so this little this little baby right here, mm -hmm. this tree of harmony. I put this up there for the camera for everybody to see. If you haven't seen this before, it is gorgeous. Look at that. Um, it got lost. This beautiful piece of artwork was lost. Oh, that, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Tell us a bit about the about the lost story of this piece. Well, um, yeah, that I sent. I originally sent the Tree of Harmony along with another pin of mine called Apples to the Core. I sent them to BabsCon and. Um, 
I was I wasn't able to attend myself, so I just sent it there. And I, I remember getting a tweet from Screwball saying, mm-hmm. "Hey, do you donate some pieces to the charity, right? Because I'm not seeing them on the table with the rest of them." <laughs> and suddenly, I was just thinking, "Uh oh." And I contact I well, I tried my best to contact someone who worked there, and I was asking other people around. I was like, "I need people to find." Um, I posted mm-hmm. pictures of them, and I said, "I need people to see if they can find these pieces for me." And everyone was saying, "We don't see them. We don't see them anywhere." And it was pretty nerve wracking. I was, mm-hmm. I wasn't even at my home, in my shop or anywhere where I can actually had all my contact information. I was off visiting family, and so I was on my phone trying to get as much information as I could while people were at the um, convention trying to find them too. And I really did not get any results until I'd say about a week later when I was able to contact the um, head of the convention, mm-hmm. and I contacted her personally. And when she found out, that was actually her first time hearing of it. And when she found out, she made her entire convention staff just drop everything they were doing. And she said, I don't want anyone doing anything else until these two pieces are found. And they found the two pieces um, among some, somebody's personal possessions saying mm-hmm. the, they said um the person said well i thought these belonged to us i didn't know that they were for the charity i thought these were gifts to us mm-hmm. and i was like okay oh, I'll, I'll, right. I'll buy i'll buy that i said just send them back please mm-hmm. yeah and i i sent the uh, tree of harmony that you see there to everfree and mm-hmm. um apples to the core went to track mm-hmm. yep yeah, that's incredibly awesome that they got found and and, and yeah. actually made some money for some other charities um, yeah, weird. Um, you've done crowns and tiaras before, but I've kind of sworn off doing crowns and tiaras. Are they really that difficult to do? Yes. <laughs> um, that was probably the worst um, four weeks of my life <laughs> in this fan. <laughs> Uh, they, here's the deal. Um, I have a lot of um, a lot of my equipment. Well, all of my equipment really is designed for making jewelry. Mm-hmm. And um, apparently, when they design this equipment for making jewelry, they never took into consideration that you might be making something as big as something that you would wear on your head. Everything that I have is designed to make jewelry that's the size of a belt buckle or mm-hmm. small. Yep. So when you're trying to do something that huge, it a lot of my tools are just too small. My acetylene torch isn't a huge torch. It's just mm-hmm. a small little handheld thing that's meant to get little spot welds here and there, and it couldn't handle the mass of something that big. And um, my arc welder only sits so high off the table, and I mm-hmm. couldn't get my pieces in there. It was just a nightmare, and the, wow. none of my equipment could – I couldn't fit it in any of my equipment, so a lot of the finishing work I had to do by hand. It would mm-hmm. take hours and hours and hours, and it was just one of those things. I said, okay, after these two, I said, no, never again, never again. I've proven that I can do this, yep. and that's it. <laughs> no more. <laughs> and I, I, I've, had, I've had people make me off some pretty tremendous offers. They said – Make this for me, and this is what I'll pay you. This is the offer I'm giving you. And I've looked at that, and I've I've had a few offers where my eyes have actually went pr- um, bulged pretty big. I was like, that's uh, quite a few zeros, and I was like, but no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. I said, no. I said, I said, making those crowns took some years off my life. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> well, whoever has them better be be careful with them because they're they're one of a kind. They're never gonna have be made again. Um, uh, is there a project you've been dying? to do, but haven't, either because it's been, one, not not been commissioned yet, or two, is just too dang expensive to do. Is there anything out there that you, you got in your mind that's just like, I'd really like to do that, but? Well, um, a lot of, uh, part of my job for my father um, is, a big part of it would be stone setting. Um, I do a lot of stone setting for him, and I, if you see a lot of the pieces in my pony gallery, You'll notice I don't really have too many gemstones in some of them, and I would love to start incorporating more gems into my designs. And one design I would love to do would be something um, made of solid gold and, and just encrusted with gemstones. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we're talking something very expensive, but just something big and blingy that just says oh my. big and blingy. Yeah. It just makes a statement. I mean, you can you, you somebody wears it at a convention, you can see it across the vending hall. Like, mm-hmm. what is that? What what is that he what is he wearing? It's blinding me, you kind of thing, you know. <laughs> just just something big and flashy. I'd love to do something big and flashy that but yeah, like you say, price would be an issue, but um it's still definitely something I want to do at some point. Sort of like Pinky's rat bling, you know, you get the big chain yes, with the, yes. the bling and the grills. 
You, you should do like you should do like teeth grills with MLP across the front <laughs> and diamonds. There you go. Done. Yeah, and uh, things like that. It's actually funny you mentioned that. I've actually had a request to do grills and what? Things like that. And I've oh yeah, I've been I've had some crazy requests, but uh, some of those things I actually kind of steer away from because there's because now you're talking. If you don't follow it, if you don't do it a certain way, mm -hmm. um, you risk health violations. You know. Yeah, you don't want to mess with that. Know. Right. So I just kind of said, no, I'm not going to do that. Nah, nothing like that. Um, let's see. I think that's about it. We're going to go to commercial right now. So I don't know if this is over my head, but I'm going to take that down. So go to commercial, and when we come back. We're going to talk conventions, and then we're going to talk charity work. And then we'll get Screwball in the call so that all you people out there in TV land can ask this man all you want to know about how to make jewelry. All right? So stick around. We'll be right back. Since the beginning of time, the elite of Equestria have longed for pony fashions that truly express the essence of their very souls. Patiently waiting decades no, centuries, for the perfect pony gown. Today, at long last, Equestria, your wait is over. Let's hear it for the breathtaking designs of Pony Valzone. Ready! Certainement, Spike. All your ponies, be sure to visit the shop in Ponyville. For the rest of us, be sure to pick up the t-shirts, the bags, or even the posters from willowfine.com. That's right, willowfine.com for all your pony needs. And remember, Carousel Boutique, where every fashion says chic, unique, and magnifique. Mwah. That's right, ponies, down there at Carousel Boutique. You might not think that the winter has a fashion season, but it does. It does. I saw the, I saw the precious gem-encrusted snow galoshes myself down there just last week. So you need to go talk to Rarity about winter fashion. And maybe Silver Slinger will make you a pair of those galoshes. Maybe he will. <laughs> but everybody else go to wheelofine.com because they got shirts like this. And they got shirts like this, which are awesome. And I actually got this one replaced by my local Hot Topic, who just happened to have a 2X in, in stock. And when I told them what happened about the, the shirt, the story that I had last show, they said, just bring it in, we'll take care of you. My local Hot Topic people are awesome. Thank you very much, gang. Um, so we got this all replaced, it's beautiful now. See that, mm, love it. Uh, but let's go forward a little bit. Let me get my script up and we'll talk about uh, upcoming uh, convention season. The first convention of the year is PonyCon 2015 in Brooklyn, New York. That's February 14th to 16th, and they have a wonderful supply guest. Ingrid Nelson and Daniel Ingram, Vincent Tong, and Andrea Libman are all going to be there from the show. They also have, as well, Animated James, who just released a freaking hilarious video, if you haven't seen that one. So, you know, if you're under 18, you know, watch the swearing, but pff, it's hilarious. Um, Denny Butt, who's another awesome artist in our fandom. Draw Ponies will be there, and Syrah 360 will also be there. Um, they are having a holiday party, so if you want to get in early and have some fun, December 27th is going to be a holiday party there in Brooklyn. Go to PonyCon2015, that's 2015.com, forward slash black and white bash to get all the details uh, for that one. Next up is BabsCon, April 3rd to 5th, 2015. Many more guests have been announced. we got John Delancey, Kathy Westluck, Tara Strong, Ian and Claire Corlett. And Brian and Bruna Drummond. Tony Fleece and Heather Breckel will also be there from the comic side. Now, do you realize this, people? That not only is Ian Corlett going to be there, but so is Brian Drummond. Do you know who they played? Take a sweet guess. I know Jax Blade would know this. Vegeta and Goku will both be at BabsCon. They could explode the whole place for all we know. So you got to show up to that one. So they're going to be there. And then we got, uh, let's see, Everfree Northwest, May 29th to 31st. 
That's 2015 guests. John Delancey again, but Nicole Oliver and Tabitha St. Germain will also be there. So Discord, Celestia, and Luna will all be in the Pacific Northwest that weekend. Um, the results of the art contest have been announced, so check out everfreenw.com for all of the results for the art contest. So if you have a convention going on and you want to update, send it to Dusty at ManlyInformer.com, and I will talk all about your charity during that slot. Thank you very much. Convention, that is. Charity. I was reading forward. Charity is coming up. So we had SPCA of San Francisco, which is for all the animals. And because of the, the season, and there's a whole lot of things going on, shopping, all kinds of stuff. We were a little behind on our charity work for this one. So we're going to just extend it. Extend it another two weeks. So Silver is okay with that. Silver's all about the animals. So Silver yep. is going to be ha you know, throwing his on top of Tommy. And so it's SPCA, SPCA of San Francisco for all the animals um, up in this area that need some help. We have horses and, and rabbits and cats and dogs and everybody needs help during holidays. So we're going to go ahead and might that go forward. So all of the stuff that we talked about last time is still up for grabs. So we still have uh, the Nurse Red Heart that you can only get at, at the Walgreens, right? And I've got all of the Twilight Secret Fit cards special from BronyCon and a couple other conventions right there in that pack. You're going to get my card along with this stuff. You're going to have a box of my Smarties. Thank you, Margin Line. We're going to have the My Little Pony Friendship is a Magic comic. This is issue number 12, uh, Cook, Price, and Breckle. And this is the Wild Stallion Within. This is the first half of the Prince Shining Armor and Cadence. And it's got the really cool cover of him with the Monster's Manual and his dice bag. You know, like, that's a wonderful thing. And now, all of that stuff. And a couple other things I'll throw in because i got a box full of stuff. So it's going to be awesome. Now, if we hit Crack 500, we talked about, we were also going to throw in, you know, the signed copy of a script page from Charlotte Fullerton right there. And this one is from When Push Comes to Shove, which is the working title of Putting Your Hoof Down. And this is outlined by Charlotte Fulton, and that was January 27th of 2011. So that is a long time ago, signed by Charlotte this year for you. Also, this wonderful, huge... Hasbro toy bag shop thing with some also signed by Charlotte. That's also up if we hit 500 bucks. But not only that, I got it on good authority from one Mr. Slinger that he's going to throw something in. Sling, talk about it. Well, I thought to help the charity, I made an entire set of the Keys of Harmony, all six of them. All six? Of the Keys of Harmony. So you got one for every day of the week and you can just wear a Rainbow Dash twice on Sunday. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Or rarities. Or, oh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Who'd want to wear that one? But anyway, all six Keys of Harmony from the Slinger Man. They're already done. He's not even. But you know what? He's not going to send them to me. He's not going to send them to me unless we crack 500 bits. Not going to do it. So we need to go over to manlysbrony.com, click the link, give a couple of bucks, and let's get that thing over 500 bills, and then we'll get all of this stuff is in play. You know, so we got one more show this year, and let's make it really good. I mean, we, we're going to crack 50 grand this year, so let's just get it really up there. Thank you very much, everybody who's given us a couple of bits that's out there, especially people like Streza and all those guys who are just like, come out of the woodwork at the last minute. Love you guys. Thank you very much. Oh, so that is going to be charity. So we're just going to slide it on. For another two weeks. All that stuff. Plus the Keys of Harmony. Plus the Keys of Harmony. I mean, the come on. The entire set. The entire set. Not just one. Not just two. Not just four. All six. There's all very six. few people who ha own the entire set. And very few. Else, and the people who do own them had, had to have bought in each and every one each of them. Each and every one. That's yeah. the only other way. <laughs> hey, you know, Sling. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Okay. Have, you, have you seen Pixel Kitty's key for Trixie? Uh, I have, yeah. Isn't that kind of Isn't that kind of cool? It is cool, yeah. Is that hard to make? Um, that one would be a little trickier to do by hand. Um, I the only thing that was keeping me from doing it was I did not want to, um, you know, I didn't want to uh, step in on her step you know, on her toes. I, yeah, I didn't want to step on her toes. That step was her toes. design. She came up with it herself, and yeah. I was like, uh, I 
I better not touch that one. <laughs> how, how about this? How about if I can get you permission, would you take a crack at it? Yeah. How about this? If I, if I can get permission to get you to take a crack at it and you can get it done, how about we throw that in? Sounds good to me. Done. Okay, so I'm going to talk to Pixel. We're, we're going to get the okay for it. If we can get the okay, Slinger is going to make the key of Trixie, the only one ever to be made by the Slinger. How's that? Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, I'll talk to Pixel this week. So with that, so go over to manlysmory.com, click on the link, give us a couple of bits, and you might actually get the only key that Slinger's going to make for Trixie. So we'll see if we can get that, get that done. And with that, that is charity work. And thank you very much. In another two weeks, we'll, we'll just get it all taken care of. End of the year is coming up. Coming up soon. Coming up fast. Yes, it is. So, it's now time. It's now time to find the screwball. Where do you think Screw is hiding today? Is he behind the tree over there? Is he behind the lights over there? Is he under the table over here? Where is he? Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> the screwball is everywhere. It's like Savoie Fair. He's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> he is. How you doing, Screwball? I'm doing pretty good. It's awesome, my friend. It's foggy and crazy at the moment, actually. Foggy and crazy. Yeah, there's been, uh, uh, quote-unquote, rolling blackouts. Um, Ro what? Yeah. The only thing that I'm actually currently, the only reason why I'm currently online is yeah. because I have an amazing power adapter that keeps me online. <laughs> so, oh, wow. So, uh... So if I do end up cutting out, I'll let you know when the lights go out. I'm like, okay. yeah, I don't want to be on here for about maybe 20 more minutes. <laughs> okay, okay. so we should we should get moving then. So yes, bring us some I got, questions. I got a lot, actually. Do it. Oh, my God. Wow, a lot of questions. List. Yes. Um, I'll bring this one from Spike Farmane. Um, hey. That's yeah, Mike. you know who he is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, he, he says, we made a great team coming up with the Hoof Wrestling uh, Championship belt for BabsCon. Would you be interested in collaborating again in the future? Oh heck yeah! In in fact, um, I, I had the, I had this idea in my head the other day because I've also I'm also working on a collaboration with another artist and crafter, and I was thinking, why don't we all get together and do one big collaboration with some you know some wood carving from Firemain, you know some some metalwork from me, just you know why not all of us get together and just do one huge amazing project for something? You know how awesome that would be. Oh wow. I think that would just be fantastic. Fantabulous. <laughs> so that's actually something I was going to discuss with a lot of crafters uh, next year, maybe for BabsCon or Everfree or one of those conventions. Mm -hmm. I think that would be, yeah. But yes, my answer is definitely yes. I would definitely be interested in working with uh, Fireman again. Awesome. And he says, count me in. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, so this one is from Christmas Tree, spelled with a K. <laughs> Genius. Um, oh, so the, the, uh, so the question is, what was your... Uh, what was your favorite piece of jewelry you've made this year since we're almost at the end of the year? Wow, yeah. Oh, gosh. It's kind of like saying, who's your favorite child? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, this is Lee Billy. Uh, this year, hi. Um, you know, I got to admit, that is a tricky one. It really, It's really hard for me to, to choose one. But um, I'll tell you mine. Mine was easily the apples to the core one. Oh, the apples to the core. And that I is, wanted that one so bad. <laughs> I am very happy with that. That was um, one of those pieces after I saw the episode. I was you know, later that night. I was just lying in my bed thinking, and I was like, "Hey," <laughs> you know, it just kind of just came to my mind out of nowhere. And I was like, "I got to work on that all day tomorrow. I'm gonna just drop everything else I'm doing and do this one piece." <laughs> I said, "Cause this is awesome. This is gonna be so cool." Amazing. It was amazing too. Yeah. So. Okay, I, I guess we'll say the apples to the core. I, I, that is definitely one of my favorite ones from this year. Awesome. <laughs> um, sorry. Oh. I'll also pay attention to the RC. There's so much people chatting. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so this one is from Merrick Ishtar. Um, uh, uh, question is uh, to everyone. <laughs> this is a toughie. Are there any animated shows you dislike? Ooh. I um, I hate to say this because a very good friend of mine worked on it, but I could not stand the Dilbert cartoon. I just couldn't. <laughs> it was out for maybe about six episodes, but it was horrible. I have to think hard on this one. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, 
I guess like Aaron now or just overall? Overall, so, overall. Okay, okay. Uh, one cartoon I guess I never liked growing up um, was Ren and Stimpy. Uh, a lot what? Like, yeah, a lot of people liked it. I know, but it was one of those things when I watched it when I was younger. I was just like, this is. Not for me. <laughs> I, I could never watch. I it was just, it was it was a love or hate. People loved yeah. it or hated it. And yeah, as you yeah, got my, older, you start yeah, my, understanding. My father it. loved it. My father yeah. was like, "All oh, right," and I was like, "And I'm gonna go do something else now." You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I would. I I, I I really don't know. <laughs> I I I don't watch enough cartoons out uh, as much. Like, oh, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, yeah, I got nothing. Uh, it's, it's 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 too hard of a question for me, honestly. I'm just I'm just gonna move on to the next one because I got nothing. Uh, uh, actually, this one's from Trailblaze. Okay, Silvery, so if you had a hard time with uh, the uh, favorite uh, favorite jewelry of the year, how about from Trailblaze? What's your most favorite jewelry ever made? Ooh. Ever made? Yeah, that's not. Um, harder at all. Uh, <laughs> I guess, like, well, I'll, I'll just stick to pony themed jewelry because if I think of other stuff, it, 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 that goes explodes. Way, yeah, that goes way back. Um, one piece that I've always really liked, I guess, since I first made it, would probably be the Mare in the Moon ring. Um, oh yeah, that w was that piece has just always just been one of my designs. I look back even today, and I was like, man. When I made that back then, that was just something beyond what I was capable of at the moment. And I look at it now, and I was just like, that's just so cool. I, I would definitely have to say the Mare on the Moon. Right? That thing's elegant, dude. It's, yeah. it's, it's just elegant. It's a nice piece of work. Thank you. Next. <laughs> Sorry, I, there's so much reading. Uh, this one's from um, Marby Z. Marby Z. Uh, he, he's been bringing out a lot. Same with... Uh, Oh, who, who's the other one that's been bringing a lot? Trailblaze as well. So don't don't be surprised if you start seeing a couple more. But uh, from right. RBZ for you, Silver. Um, what's your favorite Sonic game, and what was what was the last Sonic game you played? Um, I am I am a huge fan of the classic Sonic games. I've played a few of the newer ones, and some of them I like, some of them I didn't care much for. But I'm old school all the way and uh i would have to definitely say my favorite adventure game on these classic sonics is when you combine sonic 3 with sonic and knuckles and it just goes into one long huge adventure that just and i would definitely have to say that's my last my favorite and the last one i have played uh -huh. well uh, also from him uh what, what is your favorite sonic character uh my safe my favorite sonic character was always no. Well, it was always Sonic himself. Mm -hmm. He was just awesome, you know. Always confident, fast. You know, I was. I, I always try to be. I always wanted to become a runner. You know, like try to run track and do all that when I was younger. So I always admired how fast he was and how confident he was. And definitely Sonic himself. Yes. Cool. <laughs> uh, I never actually really played much of the Sonic games besides the very first, and I sucked at it unbelievably. <laughs> the first one. The first one was actually a little harder than them because there's some moves he doesn't have yeah. in the first. But mm -hmm. um. uh, so this, let's see, yeah. Um, where did I put you? Oh, here we go. So this one's from Claire Cobra. Uh, Silver, uh, has there ever been a piece that just did not want to come together the way you wanted? Oh, yeah. There were a few. <laughs> I, There were many pieces that I wanted to to bring together that never saw the light of day um one of which was the bracelet flutter ray uh not flutter ray sa uh, saddle rager mm -hmm. wore on the power pony episode the bracelet she wore had a brilliant idea almost had it finished and the end product just wasn't what i had hoped and there were others that never even made it that far and uh, it's always kind of heartbreaking when you you know you get get an idea in your head that you just love and you try to make it happen and it just doesn't happen it just doesn't work it's mm -hmm. very unfortunate but yes that has happened on many occasions where i've had a design that just did not work <laughs> sounds tough actually <laughs> it is yeah yeah oh my goodness 
And I, I still have all your, all of your successful ones. <laughs> like, goodness, I don't even know how many I have. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> but I still have the Alcorn one I got from Vegas. Nice. Right here. I, I think I, last time I counted, you had about 14 of my designs. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't feel like it, actually. But uh, I, 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 I still have it in its case. I will not wear it. I'm too afraid to. <laughs> Um, let's see. Yeah. Oh, whoops. Wrong tab. Uh, ooh, ooh. Uh, so this one's, uh, no, I'm pretty sure we already know this one, but I'm just going to ask anyway. Uh, from Moon Solace, what was the most difficult project you've worked with? Yeah, going, yeah, like you said, going back to the crowns, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I remember, I remember, uh, talking to you about a somber kind of like, nope, never again. <laughs> nope, never again. <laughs> I guess if it, if I had to choose between the somber crown and the um, element of magic tiara, between the two of them, I would have to say that the um, believe it or not, the element of magic tiara was actually harder to make between the two of those. Oh really? Yeah, and um, just some issues I ran into, uh, but that was actually more uh, my own fault. Um, I, poor planning, I guess you mm -hmm. can say. Like I had the um, somber crown planned out from step one to step to the final step, and. Um, step 200 i guess and the magic <laughs> tr i was just like no oh, let's just go, let's just dive right into this and so many issues and stuff because I, I just i did not have it planned out so the element of magic tr would be the hardest i've ever done oh my goodness because i never you saying you're stressing so hard and i don't know <laughs> um Oh, here we go. So this is from Dirty Can 1991 uh, for uh, Silver. Thank you so much for the Flimflam Curative Tonic Flask. It, it still stays in mint condition on my bedroom shelf. My question is, if I made an art piece on a metal keychain, would you sign it for charity at BronyCon? Uh, yeah, I'd be happy to. That is awesome. Look, oh, oh, phone. Stop it. Oh. No. What? <laughs> so wow. It's my phone just echoed across the whole thing. I just heard it. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, you just, you just boomed in my ear. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> That's work. It's like, um, you're like, screwball, what are, what are you keeping in your room? That's what I want to know. All sorts of things. Yeah. We, we do not speak of such tragedy. We don't speak of those things. Next. <laughs> um, uh, so this is, uh, uh, let's see here. Ooh, okay, so now this one has been constantly brought up. Uh, and uh, I, I'm sure Dusty, you can definitely talk about this. Um, okay. uh, this one's from Marby Z. Question for you and Dusty: uh, You guys decided? Uh, have you guys decided where you're going to move the show to now that EFN is shutting down? Um, we have, we have, and I'm going to hold that information until the last show of the year, which is in two weeks. Yep. Yep. So Probably we have we have made a decision, but we have to cross the T's, dot the I's, and basically come up with the procedure of doing the show because we've done it now the way we do it for two years maybe more so i have a, a system down as to how i do the show if i now i have to come up with a new system so basically it's going to be about a month of practice to make sure that when we come you know live on january 12th which will be the first show away from everfree network that it there's no telling that it's it's different. There's no telling, no tripping. We're professionals around here. And we're going to make it right. So um, I do know where we're going, um, and we're going to keep that till next show. And you will know soon. Yep. And, yeah, I know a lot of people have been constantly asking, what's going to happen with Steve Roy and my friends? Trust, trust really me, know. we're not shutting down. We're not yeah, going anywhere. Sure. Good. Yeah. Not going anywhere, okay? The show is too good to Screwball, too good to me, and too good to you guys. So we are going to continue doing what we do, and be, as long as you guys keep coming and being entertained, we will keep entertaining you. So we will find a place and a way to do it. So it's trust me, it's, it is a little nerve wracking. It was a little <laughs> nerve wracking when the when the announcement was made, but I knew I knew what was coming a couple of days beforehand. So it's not like it was thrown at us. You know, the guys at Every Network did contact me and said, you know, we're probably going to do this. So start thinking about it. So it was just it wasn't a, a total surprise, but. It was, uh, it was enough of a surprise. So, so trust me, we are going to make it happen. We will, we will be here for you. Don't, don't you worry about it. Next. Awesome. Uh, is this one? Ooh. So this one is from Pink Pearl Apple. Uh, this one's for you, Silver. Uh, is the dazzling necklace you made before going to be coming back? Oh, yeah. The dazzling necklace, um, I usually put it in my, um, 
I put it in my shop every week, you know. The interesting thing about my Etsy shop that a lot of people don't realize is um, I have it up there as if all that stuff's available. Mm -hmm. um, technically, that's not true. When the order gets placed for something handmade, it gets made within the next um, two to three, four days after I make it. Um, having said that, that means that um, I only can put about one piece of each design in my shop. Otherwise, I will get overworked because mm -hmm. so unfortunately, I can't keep up with the dazzling necklace is one of my currently one of my most popular pieces and I'm having a hard time keeping up with the demand because every time I do put it in my shop it's usually gone within like the next 24 hours that's why it seems like it's never in there but yeah every, I, I update my Etsy shop every Saturday at 8 30 p.m. central time and if you want to grab that one my recommendation would be to be there at 7:59. exactly yes <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah it gets put in my shop once a week it just sells fast <laughs> yep uh, yeah. uh so this one oh yeah i like this uh so this is from hulisha silver have you expanded into body jewelry ton rings etc um some body jewelry again it's that whole health issue thing you know things that go in your mouth um i prevent i don't want to do because like i said health reasons mm. um other body jewelry, I've actually had some requests to make certain types of other body jewelry, some that have kind of made me right in the face. Um, and I would tell I tell them, I was like, you know, I've actually never made anything like that, but maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. But it's not something I'm probably going to sell, like, prominently. It's usually just something if somebody asks me to make it on request, I'll give it some thought and um, do a, go from there. But... It's never really crossed my mind to actually make it a, a thing that I would sell at my bit, um, table. Mm -hmm. That actually kind of reminds me, because um, uh, I know you probably get this 100,000 times over, but uh, do you ever make commissions for people? Um, I used to do commissions for, I used to have two different commission categories, handcrafted pieces and engraved work. Uh, for the last year, though, I've actually about a year ago I've actually shut down my handcrafted commissions permanently and the reason behind that was just because I was getting overwhelmed um, I, I, I looked and I realized that my workload was way too much for me to handle and I said okay something's gotta go and mm. that just seemed like the, the one choice that made the most sense was handcrafted I didn't want to but it was it was either that or never sleep again type of thing. <laughs> um, I who needs sleep it's overrated yep. But I still do the I still do engraved commissions. That work I can do. Yeah. Awesome. Uh let's see here. Ooh. <sighs> so this one is from Justice! <laughs> I had to prepare myself, but now I wasn't yeah. prepared. <laughs> Resident superhero. Stay burning my friend. Who I've heard has actually been hired by Santa Claus himself to keep soggy milk out of his business. <laughs> yeah, because oh, you know San that... Santa can't go can't go around the country with cookies and soggy milk. Yeah. He can't. He can't do that. I was just thinking that. So he's keeping. So James Justice is keeping soggy milk at arm's length away from Christmas. <laughs> Bad idea. So that oh the cookies and the milk are safe. That's perfect. For one S clause. <laughs> yes, it is. So, what does James want to know? Because I know he's busy trying, you know, trying to track down Soggy Milk so he can do this job. But you know, he had enough time to come watch the show tonight to ask us a question. What would that so question be? Question from James is uh, uh, for you, Silver. Well, uh, where did the idea for your screen names come from? Uh, well, my people who've been following me since the beginning know that I've used to be known as Chaotic Brony. Um, and that screen name I made up in 30 seconds in a hotel room in a small town where when I was learning how to do hand engraving. I was doing that during the, I was taking classes for that during the day and at night I was sitting in my hotel room planning my first convention which was Carolot Gardens. They said you need a user name to get on our website and I was like oh well let's think of something pony related. Mm -hmm. uh, okay I just saw the episode with discord in it and so okay chaos I'm thinking chaos k chaotic chaotic okay something pony chaotic chaotic pony cha chaotic brony yeah that'll work that'll work <laughs> and I just I just stuck with it and then about a year ago I was thinking well 
I don't know. I've never really been too fond of the name. A lot of people loved it. Um, mm. I, I kind of liked it, but I was never too fond of it. And I was like, you know, I think I'm just going to, um, I, I made my OC a while ago. I gave, I gave him the name Silver Slinger. Um, and I got Silver Slinger because like I said, my father mm. has always gone, gone by Gold Slinger. That's all he's been known as Gold Slinger as long as I can remember. And I said, well, I'm his son. I'm the second one. I'll be Silver Slinger. And go. I gave that name to my OC and then I decide, you know what, I'm going to steal his name and give it to myself. I'm going to call myself Silver Slinger from now on. And Perfect. that's where that came from. Brilliant. Brilliant. And people always ask me, I get to ask this a lot, they said, so, if, is your son or daughter going to be called um, Bronze Slinger? And I went, <laughs> and I, always, I always tell them, I say, no. no. My son or daughter will be known as Platinum Slinger because they will outshine me and my father. Oh, oh, that's so awesome! Oh, that's all I'm a... <laughs> I love that. Perfect. Perfect. Nice. Yes. I love that. Uh, that just gave me like my heart just stopped. That was so awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next, uh, I, this one's also from James. I have to bring this one up. Uh, why are you guys hoping for Christmas slash Hearth's Woman Eve? Um, I don't hope for anything. I've got everything I ever need. Trust me, I've, the, the people in my life are, are awesome. They support me, you know, and really getting things on top of it is nice, but you know, things aren't everything, you know, they aren't. Things, things are nice, but things don't last. You know, good friends last. Well said, you know, that's actually probably the same for me. I've actually been requested a while back. I on Twitter I asked everyone I said I really appreciate it I really do but I need everyone to stop asking me for my address um, I said everyone's been asking me and I said just the fact that you guys are caring you know are there for me you know or my friends I said that's enough for me I said that really is I said I know you want to send me things you want to send me gifts cards to, to show your appreciation but I said but I know the appreciation is there and I said and that alone means more to me than anything and so yeah really i'm i'm fine too there's really nothing i need because yeah. i like like dusty said i also feel like i've got it all yep. that's awesome although screwball could use another steam game steam game yeah but i just got a game i just got uh uh i'm not gonna I'm, i got it for, for dirt cheap not saying what because I, I got yelled at work for a recent one but uh um, I got South Park Stick of Truth, so uh, pretty much as soon as I'm done, I'm gonna whip out this bad boy and I'm gonna go at it. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. Screwball doesn't need anything either. There you go. I don't need any. Oh well, yeah, a Wii U. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll go. I'll stay. I, I'm. I, uh, no, I don't want anything for Christmas. My parents have been constantly bugging me for. It. It's like, what do you want for Christmas? I'm like, nothing. Okay, socks and underwear. No, I don't want anything. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm a little worried because um, my family does Secret Santa, and my mother got my name, and she kept bugging me for stuff, and I kept putting off the list. And finally, she goes, "You know what? Don't send me a list. I got your things." And I was like, Ooh, "Okay, boy. what did you get me?" And she goes, "You're just gonna have to wait and see." And I said, "Am I gonna like it?" And she goes, "I hope so." And I was like, "Oh boy, oh, oh boy." <laughs> so she went down to Toys R Us and just picked something. Yeah, pr probably. Probably. Yeah. You know, she probably got you like Applejack stuff. And I, uh, that, and I would, that's when I'd be like, ooh, oh, so close. Applejack so is second best main six. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> so close. Oh, Karen was going to hurt you. You know that? <laughs> Karen will hurt you. Next. Oh, oh uh, okay. Um, uh, uh, See? Told you. <laughs> I got to type this. Uh, okay, you know what? Since I'm just live, I'm not going to type. I, I, my keyboard's too loud for show, but who licious? Yes, Gary's mod is perfect for your computer. I've downloaded it years ago, and it works just fine. Okay. <laughs> Back uh, to the show. Uh, um, uh, let's see, that's how lazy I am. I don't want to type on this monstrosity. <laughs> um, so this one is... Let's see here. Uh, my goodness, I'm just so out of it today. Uh, this is from Margin Lion. My very good buddy. Um, uh, hey guys, question for Silver. What is the most expensive Milo Pony piece you've made in terms of the metal and materials used? Uh, let me see. That would have to be, I would say, the Princess Twilight piece because um, entirely made out of silver. And behind her is a piece of uh, galaxy quartz, which yeah. is oh, very, I, very, yeah. very hard to obtain. Yes. 
And then the star on her, then she has a star crest um, right below her neck that has a genuine diamond set. Oh. Now it's actually, I think the only piece I've used, that I've done so far with a an actual diamond in it. So yes, the Princess Twilight. That one went for so much on the charity. Yes. yes. What was it? Uh, Two thousand. Uh, I think that one actually holds the standing record of its own for uh, twenty one hundred. Yes. Twenty one hundred. Okay, I was close. <laughs> yes. Oh, that was such a beautiful one. I, uh, I'm trying to remember who got it. Was it Ohad? Yes. Yes, it was Ohad. Yes, I remember. He uh, got it for his mother, and I, about every month, about once a month or so, he reminds he his mother reminds him to remind me about how much she loves it. So. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That's so cute. Um, so this one is let's see here. Uh, this one is from uh, Coaster Brownie to everyone. What is your favorite holiday movie? Ooh. Um, well, mm -hmm. mine, actually, I just watched mine yesterday. Um, I'm a huge fan of the uh, Christmas story, A Christmas Carol with Ebenezer Scrooge. I'm a huge fan of it. I'll yeah. watch any and every version of it there is. Mm -hmm. But my favorite version would have to be the one with uh, Patrick Stewart. Aha. Uh -huh. Guy's amazing. That's a, good, that's a good version. But what about the version with Henry and Winkler in it? That one's not bad. That one's not bad. That one's not bad at all. Now, then there's the one with Jim Carrey's not bad either. That yeah. animated version is the really animated good. Animated version. Yeah. There's so many versions of that movie. <laughs> there are ah, so many versions. It uh, happens with most most uh, yeah. Christmas stories nowadays. You, yeah. you know what? You know what? That needs to happen. You know what needs to happen? Me Megan, I know you watch every now and then, but here, Megan, this is what you need to do. You need to do a hearthwarming Eve tale like that with Diamond Tiara. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. So the ghosts of the, the ghosts of hearthwarming past, present, and future need to go to Diamond Tiara and teach her a lesson. I can see it in my mind. Yeah, you, you, you know what's the no? There's only one Christmas movie that beats all other Christmas Die Hard. Movies. Yes. How would you know? I hate when you. Because you that. keep telling me that. <laughs> but it's not a Christmas movie. It's a Christmas. It's movie. It's not a Christmas movie. You no, know, it's a Christmas movie. It's not. I could like grab my dad and I'm like, hey, dad, what's best Christmas movie? Die Hard. Yeah. It's not a Christmas movie. <laughs> it's not a Christmas. Movie. Uh, okay. Okay. Fine. If it's not gonna be that one, then it's gonna be National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Yeah. Yeah. I'll That's agree with that. That's that a good one, movie. That That's, one always Christmas vacation is a good die movie. Laughing. Oh yeah. It, it, I'd, I'd say it rather makes me die hard. That, that laughing. The, <laughs> uh, second, funny. second favorite right there. That, I see Nash, I see that one every year. Christmas vacation, at least four or five times a year. Yeah, but you know what? Charlie Brown Christmas started it all. So, well, actually, you know, they didn't start it all. I think the first one was actually the Rudolph Rankin Bats, which just has 50th anniversary. It did this year. Yep. Yeah, that's right. And then. I think Charlie Brown came after that, which was 65. I have to look up. But yeah, and so Charlie Brown Christmas is probably my favorite. Just because it's the thing you look forward to every year as a kid. When I was a kid, right? Because I was born in 68. We watched it all the way through every year. Every year it was on. So. Loved it. Still love it. Nice. Actually, I have, a, I have a bit of a, a surprise project coming up, which has something to do with the Charlie Brown Christmas special, which I will drop right now, right here. So, I won't tell you any more about it, but it's a special secret project. Stay tuned. I don't even know what it is. Nope. <laughs> you don't. He keeps it that secret. <laughs> yes. So, coming soon. Next. I like secrets, though. They're fun. Um, so this one's from Cool Breeze, or and also known as uh, uh, Caper Brown. Um, uh, Two questions, one for Dusty, and then the other for all three of you. Uh, uh, Dusty, I'm a huge Star Wars fan slash Brony. I've always liked Star Wars, and I became a huge fan during the 1990s. Mm -hmm. uh, I must say, becoming a Brony surprised me. I formed a Star Wars slash Brony page on Facebook. Do you have any suggestions for increasing my members? Well, hmm. The first thing I would probably do is politely make posts on other Brony sites and other brony you know fa facebook sites and say that you are you know with the new with the new film coming out is anybody else a fan i've made this page come check it out but be nice about it don't go you know stealing people from other pages just say i'm doing this is anybody interested um same thing i would probably do on twitter uh do a blast uh with pound brony behind it and say i'm doing this page um for star wars bronies anybody interested you know come check it out 
and that'd probably be the best ways to do it. Or maybe have, you know, a special MLP Star Wars piece of art done and then send a a press release to Equestria Daily and see if they want to put it in the nightly over uh, nightly roundups. And they normally do that. So um, that's three ways you could do it. I like that. Uh, also, run, um, uh, question for all of you. Have you seen the Star Wars trailer? What do you think? Go ahead, Silver. What do you think? Uh, I have seen the Star Wars trailer. Um, I'm not much of a Star Wars fan myself, uh, but I think it definitely looks promising, though. It's probably something I'm more than likely going to see. Yes. I love the sword because it actually makes sense. Yeah. I've, <laughs> oh, I've yeah. seen it as an old school Star Wars freak kid who grew up with when Star Wars came out in the actual theaters in 76. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited that, you know, Millennium Falcon's back. You could tell that it's been updated in points just from, you know, slowing it down frame by frame. Not that I did that. You totally did. <laughs> I totally did. But yeah, it, there, there's some fun going to happen. There's some fun in there and I like it. And I think it's going to be awesome. I want to see that sword in action. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I'm sure we will. Sure and, we will. And, and I, because as I keep telling everyone, those, those, uh, uh, what would you call it? Safeguards. Yes. That thing is genius because why do you think Luke and all those guys get their hands cut off? Because they don't have that. Yeah. That's the reason. <laughs> oh, there, well, there goes my hand. So, yep. oh well. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I keep telling everyone that for those who are like, oh, it's a Swiss Army knife. <laughs> Uh, actually, it kind of is. It looks funny. <laughs> Next. Um, so this one. Uh, ooh, so this one's from RBZ. Question for all. Have you gotten your Christmas shopping done yet? How many people uh, did you get gifts for? Or will you be getting gifts for? Um, I've got everything but one. So, <clears throat> so I've got the, the, lo the, the closest people to me in this room. Plus my niece, my niece, my nephews, and mom and dad. So that's it. Yeah. Um... My family does, like I said, they do secret Santas to keep it affordable for everyone. And mm -hmm. I got my mother this year, so I, I, I bought two of her things. This is actually handy because two of the things she wanted, I could actually get through one of my wholesalers at a wholesale price. So good quality stuff for half the price. Yeah. Um, and um, but I still need to get a couple more things for her. And I also shop for my nieces and nephews. And um, my oldest sister has two nieces and a nephew. She said they want a trampoline. So I said, I said, I'll get them the trampoline, but that's all they're getting. That's, you know, and she's like, nope, that's all they want. And I said, okay. So that, that knocked out three of them. And I still got my youngest niece who um, belongs to my other sister to shop for. And I'm actually doing that later tonight. Awesome. I th I go to Toys R Us because they have a bajillion My Little Pony things. Oh, I yeah. Mean, stuff I haven't seen before. And little, I mean, there's another princess baby doll there. I don't even remember the name, but it's like crazy it's, amounts of stuff yeah it's actually funny you mentioned that because um uh, my mother actually sent me a um a text one time with the picture and she goes they have this at sam's club it is a twilight sparkle it's it's like a little hug toy that mm -hmm. i guess warms you know lights up and she's yeah. like you can get this for your youngest niece and i replied to her and i said that thing isn't even close to show accurate i would never <laughs> forgive myself <laughs> if i bought that for her <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, you know what? I'm going to bring this up right now. You know those the, the little charm bracelet ring things that they announced like a month ago that had the Cutie Mark Crusaders Cutie Marks on them? Yeah. Yeah? And then they came back and they had another picture where the Cutie Marks were gone. They were at Toys R Us. And I looked on the back in the packaging and the Cutie Marks are still there on the packaging. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. It gets yeah. deeper and deeper. So, next. That really does. Ah, oh, so this one's from Holicious Silver. Have you considered teaching classes in engraving? Oh, there you go. Uh, damn it. The issue with that, well, there's two issues with me teaching anything. The first issue, and I can, I, I, I know about two or three people who can vouch for me, is I'm a terrible teacher. Um, I'm very, <laughs> very, I'm very, very bad at teaching other people things in general. And, um, Second of all would be uh, time. The issue would be time. Uh, you know, I, like we mentioned, I work for my father during the day. That's a 40 hours a week job right there. And yep. then all the pony jewelry I do is at night. And that 
depending on if it's convention season or not, that can be another 20 to 40 hours a week. So I spend about, yeah, 60 to 80 hours a week working on making jewelry. So I'd, I'd, I'd never have any time to teach others. Mm-hmm. And he loves making jewelry. He obviously loves making jewelry. Or he wouldn't oh, yeah. do it for eight hours a week. Yeah. What's, what's that? What's, what's, I, wait. Um, my father, I actually even asked my father one time, I said, I'm spending sometimes anywhere from 60 to 80 hours a week just designing jewelry. I said, do I have a problem? And my dad said, when I was your age, I spent 90 to 100 hours a week doing nothing but jewelry. He said, you're right on par. I was like, okay. Nice. You, you know what, guys? You know what? I think hmm. Princess Twilight has opened the portal because I'm now getting the signal from Joe Stevens in Equestria. At the desk in Ponyville. I got him. I got him. I got him. Okay. We're going straight to the desk in Ponyville with Joe Stevens. EQI is now. Thank you, Dusty Cats. This just in. Princess Celestia has instituted a new damage level warning system. As everybody knows, the previous warning systems from Shining Armor's shield spell to easily squishable alarms to having derpy hooves fly around and shout real loud if something dangerous comes close to just uh, shrugging and hoping all those villains locked up in Tartarus don't happen to escape have ended in complete disaster. Ponies must be warned of impending changeling or rocket-propelled Pinkie Pie attacks. That's why Princess Celestia is proud to announce a new color-coded Discord system to warn of the threat level in Equestria. If Discord is blue, all is well, and don't listen if he says different, he's lying. If he's green, the threat level and body temperature is slightly elevated. And if he's orange, then the threat level is more elevated and you should probably call Twilight to get her to do something. If Discord is purple, there is elevated risk of buffalo incursions. If he's plaid, the burning ducks are attacking. If he's cerulean, your printer is out of ink. And if he's pink, it's a girl, congratulations. If he's the color of magic, be on the lookout for rampaging Terry Pratchett's. If he's indigo, you need to get your eyes checked. And if he's invisible, the newscaster is lying. A Princess Celestia is confident that this new warning system will totally work and be much more effective at giving ponies a proper warning before their world is once again nearly destroyed. In addition, if Discord is in his normal colors, then you should probably assume we're all going to die. I'm Joe Stevens, and this has been a news brief from the Equestrian Inquirer. Back to you, Dusty Cat. And another amazing story from Joe Stevens at the desk in Ponyville. Can you imagine that, Skirball? The colors of Discord is what's going on in Equestria and whether or not you need to grab your ankles and kiss your butt goodbye. What does that remind me of? It reminds me of those those like reins you De- wear. That, Defcon that... 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, obviously. <laughs> right? But now we have blue, green, orange, purple, and, and plaid. So... So that's that's what he gets. So if Discord is actually orange, we got problems. If he's plaid, <laughs> don't worry about it. But <laughs> yes, another scintillating piece of news from Joe Stevens at the desk in Equestria. And we're back with the Silver Slinger. We have a little bit of time left, so let's get in those last questions, my man. Definitely. Uh, well, this is a question for all now. Now, I don't know if you guys have been reading Flufflepuff's. Uh, uh, comics, but he asked everyone from Trailblaze, uh, what do y'all think of Big Sis, now I don't know how to say her name, uh, Mar- Mar- Mark Serline? Or however you spell it or say it? Uh, what do you guys think of Big Sis? Um, I thought it was due for a new character, and I thought that was fairly brilliant to bring in that character from the game. Right? Because Puff Puff has had a thing for this game for you know, the entire series, and all of a sudden... All hail Dead Space. <laughs> yeah, the Dead Space game. So I thought it was actually freaking brilliant that he went in that direction, so I, I, I'm all for it. Uh, well, I actually have not been very active in the um, Pony fandom at, during for the last about um, four to six weeks because I've been prepping uh, merchandise and working late for my father, you know, to get to prepare for the holiday season. Yes. So I've been pretty inactive lately in the fandom, but I'm def- I definitely got some catching up to do and I do plan to do it when I get my break next month. Maybe you should totally do some sort of jewelry of Mark Saline or however you say the name, Big Sis, because uh, 
uh, me and Fluffles have been connecting really well together because we love Dead Space and so uh, uh, when he brought that out, I, I just I was just like, whoa, this is this character is so freaky, so disturbing, but so so lovable. Like I don't know, but every time she smiles for some other reason, like you know, the very toothy mm-hmm. evil grin. It just I don't, it's so is is it bad that I find it the most adorable <laughs> thing ever? <laughs> it is. It is. It, it, it's bad, and you should feel bad. You know what? I can't feel bad about that. I love her too much. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Uh, so this one is from Marby Z. Um, I, I, I was I was taking so many questions. So I don't know if this was asked or not yet. But uh, Marby Z uh, for Silver Slayer, how long have you been making jewelry? Um, well, I I have been making jewelry since I was um, twelve years old. I'm twenty six right now, and I've been making sellable jewelry since I was seven, sixteen or seventeen. Nice. So, uh, quite a while. Has your, has your dad taught you basically everything you know now? My father taught me the very basics. He taught me how to solder, how to use a jeweler's saw, how to file. Um, and I taught myself the rest, pretty much. That's Prodigy. Cool. There you go. Prodigy. Mm-hmm. And Take like, I did, like I said earlier, there were a few things I went to school about. Hand engraving, which is something you just can't teach yourself unless someone else shows you first. Um, and... I did go to another jeweler, an old dog, um, who taught me a few tricks that not even that I never would have learned, or my father never knew either. And but um, my father actually sent me to him for another reason. He sent me to him to say, "Oh, you're just going to learn some things. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to learn some things." But what he actually sent me to him for was to gain confidence, because my father, around when I was around the age of um, 20 years old or so, I was really close to throwing in the towel and just giving up because I really felt like I'm not getting better at this. I am not getting better at this at all. And But my father could see progress there that I just could not see. And mm-hmm. he kept telling me every day, no, you are getting better. You are getting, you know, but I just didn't believe him because I was like, well, you're my father. Of course you're just going to. Mm-hmm. So he actually sent me to this other jeweler to teach me some tricks and then and to have, to, to, to show him that I was getting better. So he could tell me himself, you're like, Oh, I'm, I'm a neutral party. And I say, you're getting better. And I, and you are. And so he actually went and did that to give me confidence. And so, so, but yeah, most of it, I learned on my own. Sorry. I got off on a tangent. That's okay. (laughs) You're the guest. You can talk for however long you want. (laughs) Next. Um, Oh, so this one's actually from, um, I love bringing this one. My good friend Jamie. Um, <laughs> question for Dusty: Are you having uh, holiday live streams like last year, doing Christmas Eve or New Year's? Uh, we might. We might. Um, we haven't decided yet. If we do, it'll be on the Manliest Brony live stream channel. Um, so we haven't decided exactly what we're going to do yet. Um, it'll be one or the other. I'm sure we'll do one or the other. Um, we've only got like a week coming up to Christmas. We won't see you guys on this show until after Christmas. So if we do do one, I will announce it on my Twitter, um, on my Facebook, and on a couple of the places. So if we're going to do it, you'll know. Jeez, 10 days away. Mm-hmm. Wow. No, that means the, it's, it's, it's a nightmare for us at retail. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> then comes, okay, now I don't know, uh, this is basically just a Cana- uh, Canadian thing, but Boxing Day is the, is like, is like, um, Black Friday for the Americans, uh, we have the day after Christmas where mm-hmm. it's like we have to get rid of everything off of the shelves that were uh, Christmas stuff. Mm-hmm. So let's just make everything dirt cheap and and throw your money at us. <laughs> wow, amazing. Yeah, it's awful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Twelve hour shift is going on for that day, so that's gonna be fun. Yep. Prepared to see very angry scurry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no such thing. Next. Never, yeah, no such thing. Never happens. What is this? <laughs> uh, so this is from Bonk. Uh, for all you guys, what conventions are you guys probably going to try going to? All of them. Uh, um, um, <laughs> I'll probably go with the majors. BronyCon, Everfree Northwest, uh, Equestria LA, which I was sad to see go. So if that comes back, for sure, I will go for sure. Um, BabsCon, that's the main four. And then whatever else happens to happen to happen, so hopefully, uh, hopefully something else does happen. So uh, I'm 
I'm given enough time off from work to do four conventions a year, and yeah, I right now my, on my mind I'm thinking of doing the four major ones. Also, BabsCon, Everfree, BronyCon, and EQLA if they are successful in coming back. You know, those are the four I'm looking at right now. But the the, the thing with me though is I can change my mind on a dime. I mean, I can say one thing one day and something mm -hmm. completely different the next, so it's not confirmed. The only ones I would say are absolutely confirmed right now would probably be BronyCon and Everfree. Um, I'm really not sure because, uh, by the looks of it, I'm going to be moving to Vancouver, uh, early next year. Oh boy. And, uh, I, I don't know how much that's going to affect my convention stuff, but, uh, I actually had a funny story where I met someone on Warframe online game and, uh, and he's like, I've been to Airfree Northwest. I'm like, Really? Uh, I have two. You might have seen me with Dusty, and then it's like, uh, oh, I actually did chat with you. I was just like, I was just like, what? <laughs> it, it freaks me out. I'm believing. I'm like, are you stalking me on this game? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, I'm not. Too, I, I I want to get to our free Babskill and all those lovely conventions, but uh, it's money. Okay, Screwball, uh, you've got one more question, buddy. One more question. Make it good. One more question. Okay, to all from Trailblaze. I brought in another one from him because he brings so many. To all, what, what would be your dream car slash motorbike? Um, 1970 General Motors AMX. Big green machine. Oh, goodness. Oh, I guess something that gets me from point A to B without ever breaking down. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good luck with that. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm. You know, I, I don't know. I've never really been much of a, a a car guy myself. I I drive. I just drive. I drive a Toyota pickup right now, and I kind of always considered it my dream car because it gets good mileage, <laughs> and it's um. It gets the job done very well. And with that, we're at the end of the show. Unless, Screwball, you got one? Uh, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I really don't know. Uh, I want the, the the one that flies. Yeah, the one that flies. Jet. The one that flies. A private jet. Yeah. Private That's jet. What there I you want. go. Private uh, jet. I'd take, a, I'd take a private jet, too. That'd be yeah. nice. <laughs> private jet. So, with that, we are pretty much at the end of the program. And so, I want to remind you guys that we have a t shirt over here, that will be over my hand. And the on the YouTube actual re-edit. It's not here right now because live stream is being a putz. So yeah, our t-shirt. Go over to redbubble.com, Everfree Network, and we'll change that when we go somewhere else to find our t-shirt. So support us by buying t-shirt. We love to have you guys wearing that at conventions. If you have an idea for a t-shirt, let me know and we'll come up with the next one. I might even have a contest. Hmm. We'll, we'll deal with Sombra. <laughs> I don't know, but you know we might have, we might have a contest for a T-shirt design. Who knows? We're going to a new channel, so maybe we'll do that. I'll talk to Screwball about it. Maybe we'll do that. Um, I would like to thank Silver for taking time out of his 80 hours of making jewelry a week. Oh, uh, my pleasure. Come and talking with us, Screwball for everything he does. Amy, my wonderful girlfriend, who was here all weekend with me this weekend. Lance Bubula upstairs. Nathan, who's off at work right now. Cowboy Dave for doing everything he's done for me. EFN for doing everything they've done for us over the last couple of years um, before the end. And everyone working at MLP, FIM, and you out there who come every time we turn on a camera and make dang fools out of ourselves every time. Um, with that, guess who the next guest is, Scrooby? Uh, I, I cheated again. <laughs> Did you cheat? Uh, yeah, uh, let's see. So, uh, how, how do I hit this fun? Um, let's see, it, it involves card games. It involves certain card games, doesn't and it? it's not Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I know one of my buddies is like, is it children's card games? But uh, no, uh, uh, it's, it involves shipping. It involves shipping. Um, uh, and not your boats. Um, it, uh, who is it, Dusty? <laughs> Might it be Pixel Prism and the Twilight Sparkle Secret Ship Thick Folder Game Crew? We'll all be here next show in two weeks to talk about the game, to talk about why they came up with this game and how much stinking fun it is to play. Because it is an awesome game to play. So they will be with us. And with that, I want all of you people out there, wherever you are, 
to have a wonderful holiday season, whether it's Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, or Hearthswarming Eve, whatever you do, to just have a wonderful time with you, yours, and your loved ones. And with that, we may see you at Christmas, we may see you at New Year's, but if anything, we'll see you on the 29th with these people down here. So peace out, be excellent to each other, and we love you. Good night. Hey. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. We hate to leave you, but we'll be back soon. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. Good night, sweetheart. Good night.